Hello everybody and welcome back to a bit of Prehistoric Planet 2. So the show has officially begun. So we start with Islands, the very first episode of the second season. And my first thoughts on it? Fantastic. It's probably one of my favourite Prehistoric Planet episodes, um, Islands. It has a very cool um, premise and yeah, just the species throughout are very well made. So, um, yeah, let's get straight into it. So, Ireland, so we start in this mangrove setting in southern Europe, um, particularly around Hatzeg Island, where we left off from the first season. Um, so, a, thun a thunderstorm has hit, has flooded the area, and several rafts of vegetation are being carried downstream. And... Um, a refuge for some of the creatures that have been living in the area. One of which is a species we saw only as a baby last season and got very brief glimpses of, and that is Alcyone. So this is the adult Alcyone with its blue face, um, looking very much like the blue-footed booby. Um, many of these animals in the show seem to be inspired by some real animals. Um, the the um, Simosuchus, which we'll get to later, almost reminds you of a bearded dragon almost, or a um, dwarf caiman. So yeah, there are lots of different creatures that are sources of inspiration here. So that's an even better look. Um, but this Alcyone does not have this raft all to itself. Because, um, yeah, lurking beneath these waves is a large mosasaur. So this is an unidentified species. This does um, have a very different appearance to the um, the Kai Kai Falu or the Mosasaurus Hoffmani. So this could be any species, to be honest. Um, I haven't looked it up yet, but um, yeah, if you think you have an idea of what this um, Mosasaur is, do leave it in the comments below. And I would certainly like to hear what you guys think this species is. So it begins approaching the poor little Zalmoxies um, on the raft. So this seems to be an adult Zalmoxies, as, um, yeah, the babies were a bit smaller than this, I think. But, um, yeah, so the Mosasaur approaches the raft, and the Zalmoxies has no choice but to swim for a larger, um, a larger raft. And he manages to make it. Zalmoxie's catching a bit of a break um, from being hunted. So um, he gets this raft, has a look around, and discovers that there is a female um, also on this raft. And um, Sir David then talks about how they could float to a new island and repopulate and perhaps create a new subspecies of Zalmoxie's. Um, these things are very, uh, this is very possible, I would say, um, as this has happened with island drifters, um, such as the species that landed on the Galapagos. They got to those islands and adapted to the terrains and environments um, present. So the Zalmoxies here um, theoretically would have gone to another island and would have evolved to suit that terrain. Um, we then move further around southern Europe to um, another island. Whether this is Hatzeg Island, I don't know. But we meet Tethys Hadros, the razor-billed hadrosaur that was briefly seen in the trailer. But, um, yeah, I, I was very surprised by this addition. But um, it's welcome nonetheless, as it is apparently only the size of a human. And that is quite small for a hadrosaur. Um, so yeah, they're wandering in this clearing of um, tree saplings with their young, but they do not have this uh, little this, <laughs> this clearing all to themselves. As from the sun, Hatsugopteryx comes flying in. So Hatsugopteryx returning from season one as the heaviest animal ever to fly, um, hunting down these Tethys Hadros. 
So they chased them to the forest, and they're too large to go any further. But um, this mother Tethys Hadros is missing her young, which the Hatagopteryx um, quickly pick up on. So they're apparently quite intelligent, which is not unheard of for predators. They se seem to always be one step ahead of the game. And so they start prowling through the saplings, looking for the young, young Tethys Hadros, all working as a unit. Well, not. Well, I don't think it's actually coordinated. They're just searching, I guess. But um, yeah, this is a cool shot of just several Hatsugotrix wandering through, looking for the little Tethys Hadros that are trying to remain still, but then run. One sadly gets um, snapped by a Hatsugotrix and swallowed whole. So this is uh, something that is very reminiscent of Planet Dinosaur. For those who saw it, Hatsugotrix was included in that and was hunting Magyarosaurus, a small sauropod that was also found on Hatsug Island. Um, this is just reminiscent of that, um, at least in... In my eyes, I, I get a bit nostalgic with some of this stuff, having watched previous dinosaur documentaries and seeing um, very similar scenes. So the other two Tethys Hadros babies managed to reach it back to their mother um, in the forest, safe away from the Hatsugotrix, who then fly off. We then head to Madagascar, where we meet the Simosuchus, which is slowly built up here but yeah we have the tiny little crocodilian relative the pug nose crocodile as it's popularly known and it's very cute like it's, it's got a very cute little face but um yeah strictly vegetarian crocodilian which is quite strange but you can see all the crocodilian features you've got the the ears, um, like the ear flaps, the osteoderms, the scoots, all that. Um, but they are not left in peace as Majongasaurus shows up. Um, we have seen this still before, but um, I want to show it again as um, that is what we see in the show. So um, this is a female with one blind eye hunting these poor little Simosuchus. I mean, you can't really feel sorry for the prey. Like, the predator's got to eat. <laughs> it's just how nature works. But, um, so, the Simosuchus discovering the presence of the Majongasaurus then run to their burrows, trying to escape. But, um, the burrows are quickly filling up and one Simosuchus is not able to get in. So, the Simosuchus are blocking the burrows with their armoured backs to protect from attack. And uh, the Majungasaurus notices this straggler and approaches. Yeah, I just love the, how the Majungasaurus looks. It's a very well-made um, creature with the, um, yeah, just the osteoderms all over the place as they have been found to be. Uh, I like all the scarring because um, Majungasaurus was actually mostly cannibalistic to its own kind. So this female probably has scars from other Majungasaurus. And, um, yeah, she approaches the little Simosuchus, which then starts to kick and thrash it to try and frighten the Majungasaurus away. And, yeah, the Simosuchus isn't actually too much smaller than the Majungasaurus. Um, because Majungasaurus isn't actually as big as most people think. It is quite small for a, for a theropod dinosaur of its appearance. Yeah, so it's a big, long sausage of a dinosaur. <laughs> as most people say. But, um, yeah, the Simosuchus manages to be intimidating enough to distract the um, Majungasaurus and escape into a burrow where the Majungasaurus tries to follow but sadly does not get, get its meal. Yeah, I just got this little still because, um, yeah, the, the Madagascan landscape here looks fantastic. Just a sparse, scrubland, arid environment. So then we meet Ad Adalatherium. Um, I think that's what Sir David said in the show, in the episode. Um, the Madagascan mammal, which turns out to be a monotreme. So much like echidnas and platypus, 
the Adal Ethereum here is shown to be able to lay eggs to reproduce. And these eggs do hatch. And the young, pinker, pinker as most young mammals are when they hatch, they then move over to their mother's teat. And we cut to a few months later when they've grown up and mum's on a night hunt for roots and tubers. And we get a look into the nightlife of the um, Adal Ethereum and how small mammals had to act in the age of the dinosaurs. As we then see the female Majongosaurus wandering around still looking for prey and the Adal Ethereum pausing to avoid being spotted. While the mother is away, a Mashikasaurus, another returning species from season one, is starting to track down the, the burrow and get worried for a second that the Mashikasaurus is going to find the burrow. But then a, a large snake, I think it was Magstone, Magstonia? No. Uh, Mad, Mad, Mad Sawyer. Mad Sawyer. That, that was the name. Um, a nine to ten meter long snake. Yeah, it's cool. It's okay. This is actually really cool because we hadn't had snakes in season one, so there are all sorts of new groups being brought into the show in season two. So we're getting crocodilians, we're getting pachycephalosaurs, but we also get a large snake, which is a nice surprise. So the mother returns safe and sound, and the young and the mother now have to leave as the neighborhood is be beginning to get a bit too dangerous for their liking. And so they leave in the dead of night when they are less vulnerable to predators. We then move to Snow Hill Island in Antarctica, where we get this um, thermo uh, thermal camera shot of the Imperobators, well, Improbators, um, I think, he, I think, um, Sir David said in the show. Um, it, well, in the episode. I keep saying in the show. Well, it is a show, but yeah. So the Imperobata then wander off in search of prey, which takes the form of a Morosaurus. So we were thinking it was Trinosaurus or Morosaurus, and it turns out to be indeed Morosaurus. So, so the hunt begins. The Imperobata are closing in on their target which slips in the snow a few times, but then again, it's pretty deep snow, so can't help but do that. Uh, the Morosaurus, in its um, <laughs> in its frantic nature, is running all the way to a frozen lake. And so with the Imperobata, Imperobata's closing in, they run across the lake to try and pursue their quarry. And, um, yeah, the Imperobata are very close to the Morosaurus, but the, yeah, the Imperobata looks fantastic. I do love how it looks. Just a nice snow raptor sort of animal. It may not have a toe claw, but you could call it a snow raptor, right? Um, so the Morosaurus is still running strong. It manages to duke the Imperobata's and get away, leaving the Improvata to work out another plan of attack. And that is where we end with Antarctica, moving back to the Hatsugopteryx, which has brought what we thought was as Moxies originally, well, what I thought was as Moxies originally, turns out to be one of the Tatus Hadros um, calves. So this male is preparing to court a female and builds a um, sort of love symbol in, to females flying in the sky that see it and will come down. Eventually, a female does arrive and they begin courting each other, doing the displays, and the male showing off how good of a hunter he is, how strong he is, yeah, trying to impress her. Um, they eventually do form trust as we saw in a clip um, earlier the, earlier last week, at least, uh, yeah, late last week, actually. Um, 
Yeah, so all's going well until another male shows up, a younger male. And so the older male has to show how strong he is in a fight that, yeah, it turns very ferocious. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought that an Asdark would fight like this. But they do. Like The male even grabs the leg of the other. And so the young male flees and the male returns. The female's gone for a second but then returns. And this show of um, strength in chasing off a rival seems to persuade the female to um, let him mate with her. So it's a successful um, courting. And the male is then left on the island. Um, and that is where the episode ends. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of islands. I will be doing Badlands tomorrow and Swamps after that. That was what we will be doing for the rest of the week. Doing Prehistoric Planet 2 and covering each episode by day. So if you enjoyed it and would like to see more, um, like and subscribe if you, if you feel oh so generous. Um, but I will see you in the next one. Enjoy the content.